Hello, and I'd like to take the opportunity to demonstrate another tube fly pattern that's a good, simple, easy to tie, quickly tied pattern that will work well for not only steelhead, but by varying and adapting the colors to any type of freshwater fishing you, you care to do. I'm not familiar enough with saltwater fishing to know if it would serve that purpose, but I wouldn't be the least bit surprised. To begin this fly, I'm going to take a teardrop shaped cone from the Umer company, E-U-M-E-R, in a black color and we're going to place a piece of small liner tubing inside of that cone. Push it all the way through until you have about one or two millimeters protruding from the back of the narrow end of the fly. Once you have that, you need to take an open flame source, match lighter or a butane lighter like this, match, pardon me, and by keeping that little bit of plastic protruding, take the blue end of the flame and simply move it towards and touch gently to that plastic tubing and you'll see how it mushrooms and once that's done it seals itself. The tube won't be able to slide out of the cone forwards until we're finished with the front. It still has a possibility of doing that. Thread it onto the mandrel our tie-in point for this fly is going to be right between the liner tubing and the, the brass tube itself, the black colored brass tube. So our first step, typical with any fly tying, tie on your, your thread, make a small base just in front of that cone. Once that's done, snip our excess. And the first material we're going to use will be a section of black arctic foxtail. While that material may sound pretty exotic, it's actually easily obtainable and it's comparably priced with the majority of other fly tying materials of that source, nature. So we're looking for areas on this piece of tail section it's just the skin that's been tanned, cured, and dyed that are somewhat more free of the insulating fur common to any mammal at the bottom of the hair. Once you've located that you just want a normal sized tail. We're not looking for a lot of bulk and we're not going to be going extremely sparse. Remove that and begin removing the insulating hairs from the bottom by gripping forward towards the tips and stroking down towards the base. The insulating hairs will pull out. A dubbing comb or similar tool is helpful and can be used as well. Your fingers are designed to work just about equally as well. When you're satisfied with the majority of or all of that insulating hair being removed, place it at your tie-in point and you're looking for approximately an inch back. Measured from the thickest part of the tail, don't worry about the very tip sticking out. When that's done, Tie it in just as you would any tail. Easy technique to use to do this is called a soft loop technique. Easy on your first wrap and cinch from the bottom around and then pull. This prevents the hair from spinning around the fly, complicating your tying. Trim your excess. For the waters I fish here in Idaho, typically the clear water in the upper Salmon River, excellent color combination for steelhead is black and blue. So we're going to select a feather from a strung clump of schlappen hackle. I'm looking for something that's comparable with the size of the fly I'm tying rather than choosing 
a feather with a much broader base as this feather would have. I'll take a feather that has a more pointed tip which gives me an indication it's going to have a more tapered bottom section as well. Remove it from the clump, strip the unwanted hairs, or pardon me, the unwanted barbs from the stem which are the fuzzier looking ones. Those are insulating feathers for the bird this was taken from. Strip them back to give yourself a good tie-in point. Start on the back side of the fly and check your measurement. If you pull fibers and it appears that those fibers are going to be too long and are going to overwhelm the fly, simply continue down the stem of the feather until you reach the point on that feather where the hackle fibers will lay where you want them, which is about the length of the body section of the fly, rather than a longer one that's going to overwhelm the hair wing you just laid in. So we'll strip ahead from that point. Clip to expose the stem. The stem is our tie-in point. Goes on the back side of the fly away from where you're tying. Move it to an appropriate tie-in position and lock that stem in place. We're tying on a tube which will have an a, a tendency to spin if we apply too much pressure. Pull the hackle towards you. Stroke the fibers towards the fly away from you and fold them towards the back of the fly. Each one of these wraps should be placed directly in front of the previous wrap. If you don't have your thread in that position, you can move it ahead simply by wrapping and pushing with the fiber. About three wraps on this fly for the particular way it fishes is plenty. And tie it off and secure it. Clip your excess, fold the fibers towards the back, hold them in place while you tie them down. The reason you do this, it helps orient those fibers towards the back of the fly, it gives the conical appearance to the fly that's typical in the water, and doesn't allow the fibers to interfere with any more of the tying portion of the fly. Now we're going to add some flash to the fly. I've been having good success tying and fishing with the ultraviolet dyed materials. This is an ultraviolet dyed blue material. Four to six fibers is plenty. It's a, to accentuate, not build a body on the fly. Come from underneath, lift the thread slightly with the flash material, lift it into place, soft loop, easy over the top, cinch on the bottom, and secure. Trim the excess from the front. My preference is to trim to various lengths within the body and the tail of the fly, and possibly one or two outside of that, and the others somewhere in between. I'm going to tie off this fly to finish this portion of it. You can knot a half hitch by hand if you care. My personal preference is just a simple whip finish tool. And finish the fly. We don't need to take too many wraps with the whip finisher because we're also going to finish it with Zappa Gap or Super Glue, whatever you have access to. Either works just as well. Just a touch on the top of the fly is plenty. Humor makes an addition for tube flies called Monster Cones. They're made out of brass 
and they're painted. They're formed like a kind of like a stereotypical flying saucer and they come in a variety of colors and in a couple of different sizes. This is a medium brass monster cone. Again, those are available from several online sources. A lot of mainstream fly shops are carrying them as well. And they're also available from the Humor Company at humor.com. Once that's in place, we'll slide the fly off of the mandrel. Invert it, take your scissors and trim down to a one to two millimeter point right at the fly and simply trip, trim that off. Again, using an open flame source, lower it and just touch it and the plastic will mushroom back and it'll seal in the cone and all the materials on the fly. Slide it back onto the mandrel this will open up the tube and the melted in point you just made and allow your leader to slip through more easily. The materials we use, the Schlappen hackle and the Arctic foxtail, are very susceptible to movement in air currents, as was evident during the tying process, and also more so in a river or stream setting because of more volume. To demonstrate how well this fly moves, that would be greatly exacerbated by a water current. And that's just a simple humor leech pattern. Thank you. Good fishing.